भारतीय जनता पार्टी आणि शिवसेनेच्या नेत्यांची एक बैठक आता नुकतीच भाजप मुंबईच्या कार्यालयात झाली ज्यात शिवसेनेचे विषयात सातत्याने ताणाताणीचं वृत्त सगळ्यांमध्ये आहे युती पुढे चालू राहिली पाहिजे ही मानसिकता शिवसेनेची पण आहे भारतीय जनता पक्षाची सुद्धा आहे त्यामुळे सातत्याने काही नवीन प्रपोजल्स की त्यातली पुढे येत असतात कारण एक सलग पंचवीस वर्षाची युती तुटावी असं दोन्ही पक्षातल्या नेत्यांना वाटत नाही त्यामुळे आज एक वेगळा प्रपोजल आलेला आहे ज्या प्रपोजल विषयामध्ये आमचे जे सहकारी पक्ष महायुतीतले आहेत स्वाभिमानी शेतकरी संघटना आर पी आय राष्ट्रीय समाज पक्ष आणि शिवसंग्राम यांच्यासोबत या नवीन प्रपोजलच्या बाबत चर्चा केल्यानंतर अंतिम निर्णय होऊ शकतो आणि त्यामुळे या सहयोगी मित्र पक्षांच्या सोबत हा निर्णय आम्ही चर्चा करू आज संध्याकाळपर्यंत घेऊ आणि त्यानंतर पुढची दिशा जाती ठरवू भारतीय जनता पार्टी और शिवसेना नेताओं की बैठक आज बीजेपी मुंबई कार्यालय में हुई इस बैठक में शिवसेना के सुभाष देसाई जी सांसद संजय राउत जी सांसद अनिल देसाई जी मिलिंद नार्वेकर और भाजपा के चुनाव प्रभारी ओम जी माथुर देवेंद्र जी फडणवीस एकनाथ राव जी खड़से सुधीर भाव मुनगंटीवार पंकजा तई आशीष जी मैं हम सब थे भारतीय जनता पार्टी और शिवसेना का अलायंस आगे चलते रहना चाहिए ये मानसिकता शिवसेना में भी है भाजपा की भी है और इसलिए कई अलग अलग प्रपोजल्स वर्कआउट किए जा रहे हैं क्योंकि कांग्रेस राष्ट्रवादी को परास्त करना उनको पराजित करना ये आम जनता की भावना है और ये दान में लेकर जो नए नए प्रपोजल आते हैं उस पर हम बहुत सिंसियरली वर्कआउट कर रहे हैं आज जिस प्रपोजल को लेकर चर्चा हुई है उस प्रपोजल की चर्चा करते समय हमारे जो साथी मित्र पक्ष और भी है जिसमें स्वाभिमानी शेतकरी संगठना है जिसमें आर पी आई है जिसमें राष्ट्रीय समाज पक्ष है जिसमें शिव संग्राम है इन चारों के साथ आज शाम को ये इस नए प्रपोजल को लेकर हम साथ मिलकर चर्चा करेंगे और उसके बाद जो होगा वो आपको हम बता देंगे जे नवीन प्रपोजल आहे हे बघा बघा की आज पुन्हा एकदा युती ठेवण्यावरती दोन्ही पक्षांचं शिक्का मोडत आम्ही युतीमध्ये राहणार ज्या बाहेर ज्या बातम्या आणि अफवा पसरवल्या जात आहेत युतीचे भविष्य ठरवलं जात आहे बाहेर युतीचे भविष्य दोन पक्ष ठरवणार शिवसेना आणि भारतीय जनता पक्षाचे नेते ठरवतील आणि दोघांचंही या मतावरती एकमत आहे की महाराष्ट्रामध्ये या देशातली सगळ्यात जुनी आणि मजबूत युती ही महाराष्ट्रात यापुढे चालू राहायला पाहिजे जागा वाटप हा पुढला प्रश्न आहे तरी सुद्धा सगळ्यांना सामावून घेण्यासाठी आमच्या मित्र पक्षांना सुद्धा आमच्याबरोबर आम्ही एक नवीन मांडणी केलेली आहे त्याच्यावरती आता आम्ही चर्चा करणार नाही संध्याकाळी आम्ही सगळे एकत्र बसतो आहे आणि मला आणि भारतीय जनता पक्षाच्या आमच्या सगळ्या सहकारांना पूर्ण विश्वास आहे युती राहणार आणि युती पुढे जाणार Right, the BJP and the Shiv Sena finally are coming to uh, an agreement. Remember, this deadlock finally ending. It had been continuing for weeks now over the seat sharing in the Maharashtra Assembly polls that are in fact coming up, remember, on the 15th. Uh, not unusual in electoral politics to remain undecided about the who candidate should be from the particular constituency. But more than one candidate may be filed or asked to file his nomination. Decision often firmed up in the dying moments by the party honchos, which is exactly what has happened between the BJP and the Shiv Sena. And Rajiv Sardesai now joining us uh, for more. Uh, Rajiv, the way the BJP and the Sena fought for the number of seats each gets, you know, you know, gets to contest has been indecorous. Neither was sitting down in the Bonhomi. One expects of long-time allies to thrash out the seat-sharing issue behind the scenes and announce the numbers each got. That's right. I, look, they, they didn't announce the final numbers, but uh, this is what our sources have told us half an hour ago, that the divide is that 151 seats will be fought by the Shiv Sena. So the Shiv Sena gets uh, what it wanted, at least 150 seats. 
The BJP will fight 130, that comes to 281. Seven seats will be fought by the Swabhimani uh, uh, Sangatna, which is uh, the party of former leader Raju Shetty. And then the RPI will get out of, uh, will get a few seats out of either the Sena or the BJP's quota. That decision will be taken in the next 24 hours. But in principle, after days of this eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball confrontation, the two sides have agreed that they will fight the elections together and they will, therefore, the uh, Mahayuti or the alliance stays. And uh, as a result of which, uh, obviously, uh, the, 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 the question mark, that existed over the alliance itself is over. It's now a question of the detailing, but the broad contours of this alliance are 151 seats for the for the Shiv Sena and 130 for the BJP. So the BJP gets more than the 119 seats that the Shiv Sena was originally giving it. The Shiv Sena gets the 150 seats that it wanted always, and the allies who were for earlier promised 18 seats will now get a, a, a fewer seats. So most of these seats have been taken from the quota of the allies. Let's, let's look at the semantics now. Now that we know that the deadlock is, has finally been broken, Maharashtra is a fiery state. It's a crucial state for either of these governments. So either of being charged up to the contest in the polls with vigor, the cadre of both parties was listless because of the uncertainties. So instead of the political party's headquarters being a beehive of activities, you know, with a surge of aspirants for tickets, one sort of was seeing a deathly silence. So it is going to be hard to pick up the pieces and run a blistering campaign with hardly any time left for both these parties. That's right. But having said that, you know, at the end of the day, given what happened in uh, the general elections, where the Shiv Sena BJP uh, alliance won as many as 42 out of the 48 seats and more than 210 of the assembly constituencies out of the 288, they are in pole position. They are to, uh, in alliance, there is every chance that they will form the next government in Maharashtra. Had they been divided, then you had the possibility of a four-cornered fight in Maharashtra and that could have thrown up some interesting possibilities. But now that the two have decided to bury the hatchet, decided that for all the friction over the last 10 days, at the end of the day, they will fight the elections together, obviously their chances improve. So I, the, the, the sense one gets is that they've decided that they've realized perhaps that it is in their best interest to fight this election uh, as an alliance. I mean, frankly, uh, you know, this is an alliance which has lasted 25 years. It was only a question of the balance of power. And that has clearly shifted in the direction of the BJP over the last 12 months with the emergence of Narendra Modi and Bal Thakre no longer being on the scene. But I think pragmatism has dictated this alliance and pragmatism has dictated the two sides to w work towards an alliance rather than fight individually. So I think that eventually and i think the rss also was particularly keen that the alliance stay at least in this election because it gives them a chance to come back to power in maharashtra after almost two decades of being out of it whether the chief minister will be from the bjp or shiv sena will depend on the numbers game and that is where the strike rate of the two sides will be important the difference remember in the number of seats they will contest is around 20 seats so if the shiv sena uh, doesn't have as good a strike rate as the BJP, the BJP could still get its wish of a chief ministerial candidate in Maharashtra. But for now, as a result of what has happened, it is clearly advantage BJP Shiv Sena. So, but the logistics would not work out even for, for well-organized parties. In the end, after a bitter pre-poll intra-alliance fight, the poll campaign itself could get toned down and candidates may be left mostly to fend for themselves. So, in that case, perhaps do you sense a sense of, of defeat with, within either party where they've decided, okay, you know, this is a marriage of convenience, let's just go ahead and, and you know, let one buckle under pressure. It is a marriage of convenience at the moment and what will happen is that since uh, both sides were preparing to fight 288 seats, you will have a lot of rebel candidates from both sides. People who don't get the tickets uh, will, will contest as rebels. So you can expect some element of rebellion among local carders because both local carders were keen to fight as many seats as possible. But I think the bigger picture which will now emerge is that Uddhav Thakre and Narendra Modi or Uddhav Thakre and Amit Shah will be seen sharing a stage. And I think that does give a, a certain psychological boost to the alliance. And as a result of what has happened now, you can expect the Congress and NCP also to tie up because there has been friction at that end also. Now that the BJP Shiv Sena has made the first move and officially announced that they are staying on as allies, I don't think it will be too long before the Congress NCP uh, also seals its alliance. Remember, Pitru Paksh ends in 24 hours. Uh, the nomination process ends in the next uh, 70, 96 hours. So time was running out and they really had to take a decision and they've chosen to do that uh, 
based on the principle that the BJP had, that the Shiv Sena gets the 150 seats they wanted, and the BJP gets an incremental seat, uh, an incremental number of seats compared to what they had got uh, in the last elections. Kumar Kilkar, the editor of Lokmata, now joining us on the phone line. So, you know, we've seen despite the spectacular, uh, you know, victory in the Lok Sabha, um, it has been rubbed in that the two parties are at unease with each other. Now the deadlock has been broken, but can that air of suspicion actually be removed? Because the speculation is rife in the state, even among the voters, that now that there is a conflict between the parties, can these two, if they emerge victorious, actually work together for the state? Well, actually, they will work together up to a point and not beyond because in many individual constituencies, there has been rebellion in Shiv Sena as well as in BJP. That rebellion will continue to have uh, all the kind of repercussions, negative repercussions on the alliance. But that is not the main thing. Main thing is the alliance has stayed and the grandstanding is over. So what they ask, if this was going to be the result, why did they fight at all? And why did they squabble? I think for that also there is a very clear answer. So far, Shiv Sena was feeling completely insulted, humiliated and marginalized in the overall BJP scenario after they won the elections at the center. And Narendra Modi apparently did not give Shiv Sena adequate respect and even treated Uddhav Thakre with considerable disdain. So Uddhav Thakre and Shiv Sena have shown is that you cannot take us for granted. We are there and you have to respect us. So I think the only result is BJP hereafter will not be able to think that they can take Shiv Sena for granted and they may not be able to easily marginalize them. They will know that Shiv Sena can fight back. And that, I think, was the lesson BJP must have learned. And Shiv Sena also has learned that it has some inner strength, which under Uddhav leadership, there was considerable diffidence vis-a-vis -vis Raj on the one hand and Narendra Modi on the other. I think it has boosted the confidence level of the Shiv Sena and it has also taught a lesson to the BJP. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Kumar, uh, uh, as a result of this, do you believe, therefore, that now it is clearly advantage BJP Shiv Sena or do you believe that there will be rebellion within the ranks of those who are hoping for tickets? Given what happened in the Lok Sabha elections, can we now safely say that the BJP Shiv Sena alliance will be in pole position to form the next government in Maharashtra? Even if they had split, even if BJP and Sena are not to fight elections together, it was distinctly clear that BJP and Sena independently also were more seats than NCP and Congress. So BJP and Sena will postpone, they would have come to a power, postpone, they are a postpone alliance. So I think BJP and Sena are going to get more seats than Congress and NCP is given. I don't think it is. it requires alliance to be in place, but alliance in place will definitely help them. Right. But it is absolutely clear that BJP and Sena will come to power. The point is, if you go by Lok Sabha elections, they have something like in 240 out of 288, 240 constituencies they have the majority. But that of course will not happen. So if they get say 150, that right. actually amounts to defeat, though they will come to power. So they must win a respectable number of at least 175 plus to say that the both will have survived, the BJP will have survived, and anti incumbency will survive. So otherwise, just uh, just one yeah. quick question, just one quick question, Kumar, before I go to Bharat Kumar Rao. Between the Shiv Sena and the BJP, who do you see getting more seats? Do you see, who do you see winning more seats at the moment? BJP or Shiv Sena? I think BJP, but if they had fought separately, if BJP and Sena were to fight separately, there is a possibility of Sena getting a couple of seats more or very close to BJP. But with BJP and Sena together, I think it will be BJP which will get more seats. The BJP will get more seats, says Kumar Ketkar. Thank you very much, Kumar Ketkar. Bharat Kumar Raut, former Shiv Sena MP, now joining us. Bharat Kumar Raut, it appears that the alliance has finally been cemented at about 151 to 130 seats is, the, is, is what we are being told. Others are reporting 126 to the BJP. But given the numbers, do you believe that this alliance now is a firm alliance that it will not lead to rebellion? Uh, 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 within the cadres, do you believe that now it is clearly advantage uh, BJP Shiv Sena? Yes, exactly. It is, it is a very good news that the, finally the alliance has been forced. The question of uh, streets here and there, that is a minor thing. And in any case, there. जरूर रहेगा सीट की वो बात अभी इस वक्त नहीं करेंगे लेकिन एक बात पक्की है कि गठबंधन जरूर होगा, अलाइन जरूर होगी और शाम तक छोटी पार्टियों के साथ डिस्कस करके पूरा निर्णय ले लिया जाएगा सीट चेंजिंग के ऊपर। कैमरा वसंत मंगेश आंध्र के साथ दिनेश मिनावत मुंबई Hello. Uh, yeah, 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 yes, Mr. Raut, please go ahead. Yeah, the thing is that uh, the, the finally they the officially announced the alliance. 
the rest of the things are minor they can be sorted out in a day or two so so in your sense who has the advantage as a result of this the bjp or shiv sena see both have both have the advantage of the alliance but more it is for for bjp because had shiv sena vote gone um, uh, out of, out of the alliance bjp would have suffered the, the most therefore it is it is advantage bjp in any case okay it is advantage yeah. it is advantage bjp so both bharat kumar raut and kumar ketkar believe that the manner in which the alliance has been now struck gives the advantage to the bjp remember the critical question now is who actually wins more seats and there is a sense that whoever wins more seats gets the chief ministership so i think that issue sanjana is still not uh, a, you know is still not done and dusted we will still have to see in the days ahead who gets the more seats but for now it appears as is being suggested it is advantage bjp they've got more seats than they bargained for in the last elections and clearly with a gap of just 20 seats between them and the shiv sena they will hope to have as many seats as possible so that they can really call the shots in a post election scenario now all eyes will be on sharad pawar and the ncp which is meeting at 2 o'clock will they cement an alliance now that the bjp and shiv sena have cemented theirs Absolutely we are all awaiting that final announcement that will take place this evening but so far we know that the grand alliance remember that the deadlock was existing between the uh, the BJP and the Shiv Sena it is staying the marriage is here to stay and uh, we'll get you more on the story as it continues to develop